Hey guys, now some of you wanted me to make a video about speaking in tongues. There seems to be some confusion about speaking in tongues. So in this video, we're going to look at what the Bible says about speaking in tongues. Let's get to it. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel Moritz and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. Please subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, what is speaking in tongues exactly? Well, the Bible talks about two types of speaking in tongues. And the first one is just speaking a tongue and then other people can understand it in their language. And that happened at the day of Pentecost. The other speaking of tongues is something different. A short and simple answer is that it is a spiritual gift that God gives to certain believers and it enables them to pray and praise God in a heavenly language. Now you need to know that this is not a normal human language, but God gives this gift to certain believers to speak it and then to others the gift to understand it and to interpret it. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. All right, now let's take a closer look at speaking in tongues. There are five very important things that you need to know. Let's start with the first one. Some churches believe and say that every Christian should be able to speak in tongues. That's a lie. The Bible is very clear that we all have different spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And verse 8 says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. All right, so that's crystal clear. And some churches go so far as to say that you need to speak in tongues to be saved. It's just it's ridiculous. You're saved only by grace through real faith in Jesus Christ. Let's move on to the next one. Some people say that they can't control it. Whenever they speak in tongues, they just can't seem to control it. And some people even say that, no, when, 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 when the Spirit comes, I just I have to catch the Spirit. So I catch it and then I just speak in tongues and I mean, the Spirit is not running away from you to catch it. If you are a real reborn Christian, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. You read it in Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and listen to this, self-control. So you have self control. God is not a God of disorder or chaos. Now, I've been to a lot of churches where people just suddenly start to speak in tongues, just over each other, loud, and then nobody interprets it. Even the preacher speaks in tongues, but nobody interprets it, so nobody knows what he's saying or what the other people are saying. But the Bible is very clear that you should interpret it, and if you don't, you should be quiet. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 27 says, If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. Now listen to this. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. You know, I remember this one specific church in South Africa, Pretoria. I went in and suddenly people started to speak in tongues and even the pastor spoke in tongues and nobody interpreted it. And I looked around over the church and I could see there was a few faces. I was like, what's going on here? 
probably new people in the church, I, I'm not sure. But I spoke to the pastor afterwards and I told him what Paul was saying here about speaking in tongues and that people should interpret it. Because nobody interpreted it and nobody knew what they were saying and what was going on. It was a little bit of chaos. Anyway, this is what the pastor said to me. Shockingly, he said, it only occurs once in the Bible, so it's not that important. Can you believe that? You can't choose what you want to believe or what you don't want to believe in the Bible. You need to take the whole word of God, the truth, and abide in it. Some people say that they are more spiritual because they speak in tongues. That's a lie because the Bible doesn't say it at all. These people put themselves on a pedestal of pride. Paul actually says the following. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Now, just so you know the background here of the letter of Corinthians. Paul wrote to the Christians in Corinth because he heard that they were argu arguing with each other about who is more spiritual. They even boasted about who converted them. Even at the beginning of the letter, we read 1 Corinthians 1 verse 11. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Kephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And then when you go to chapter 3, Paul basically tells them that they are still spiritual babies, that they are still carnal Christians. 3 verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? And then in chapter 5, Paul also says that there is sexual immorality among them. Why am I mentioning these things? Because a lot of people, even in the, the church today, focus so much on spiritual gifts. And yet, these people, did the same thing, but they were still carnal. They looked like the rest of the world. And in many churches today, it is still the same. People want miracles and prophecies, all these supernatural things, instead of focusing on the most important thing, and that is Jesus Christ, to live holy and righteously, to live according to His will, to focus on sanctification. Everything else is just a bonus. It's like Imagine this big, amazing house and there's a lot of rooms in there, but you go and you look at the shade here on the ground, the spiritual gifts and the house is Jesus. So you look at the shade and you just want to stay in the shade because the shade is nice and it's protecting you from the sun. But you have no idea <laughs> if you just go into the house and just focus on Jesus, you and him and he in you, it will change your life. These other things, it's a bonus. There's a lot of churches out there today, pastors and preachers that preach these false things to people. But to people who have itching ears, who want to hear what their fleshly nature wants to hear, their desires, who want to see miracles and prophecies and want to have money. And they miss the one thing that really matters. And that is Jesus Christ, to live for Him holy because he's holy and righteous all these other things the gifts it's a bonus you also need to know about the danger of demonic counterfeit demons copy the gifts of the holy spirit and they do it to deceive christians they can even do it in the church. And that is another reason why we have to interpret the speaking of tongues in the church. 1 John 4 says, Beloved, 
do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So you cannot believe every spirit. You have to test it. That's what scripture says. It doesn't say that God will test it for you. It says you have to test it. And let me make this very clear. The so-called drunk in the spirit or slain in the spirit is not of God. You now see and hear. They heard them speaking in tongues, but what did they see? For them to think they was drunk, they must have thought they was drunk. They were acting like drunks. <laughs> The Holy Spirit would never work in you to be drunk or to be in a trance or to make noises of an animal or to take off your clothes in front of other people. God is a God of order and peace. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And some of these false churches claim that they have revival when this happens, when people are slain in the spirit, drunk in the spirit, where they go in trances and they act all crazy. That is not true revival. True revival is when God changes your heart, not just yours, but the people in that church. When the Holy Spirit comes over congregation or the church or the people gathered and He works in you to change you. And people who didn't know God before suddenly come to Him and say, God, forgive me for my sins. Here I am, start a new relationship with me. That is what true revival is. You can feel the presence of God there. And when you look around, you see that everybody feels it. They cry. It is also a cry towards God in truth and in the spirit, where you realize that you are a sinner. You bow down before the greatness of who God is. And you start to have this deep desire in you to really have a deep relationship with Him. That is what true revival is. That is a true work of the Holy Spirit. It's not about these outward things, it's what happens inside. Maybe I should make a video about this because this is so important to understand. But if you have any other questions, then you might like one of these playlists and I'll see you there. Now remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life in